Okay, this will be a VOD review for, and I hope I don't mess up the name too much, uh, Turk Namse um, on Zach Jungle. And I think the first thing I wanted to look at, who was that? I don't like that. It's kind of uh, runes and item builds for his love lane. For the most part, it looks like you do everything pretty standard. Um, the only thing I'm not, it's kind of questionable is going demolish on Zach. I, I don't really see many situations where you'd actually be getting demolish procs off. Um, and again, the situations where you would get demolish procs off, you have to think about the, the trade off of you gank the lane and then you gank the lane and then you hop shove the wave and then you get the demolish proc and at that point you've soaked like two waves of XP where shared XP from your laners and is that really worth the 80 or so plate 80 or so plate gold that you're helping get yourself um, usually not really like in, in the game XP is kind of king um, and gold is gold is also good and, and really important but um, XP is very sticky when you get a header behind in it. So, if you're if you're like forcing demolish procs and taking XP away from your laners and they're falling behind in XP because of it, even though they're getting slight gold boost, um, it's usually not a good thing. Um, and then for for these on Zach, usually people will take uh, the diagonal of health, armor, cooldown, like you already take cooldown really good, good for Zach. Um, the reason people take armor, of course, is for the jungle camps, they, I believe they all do physical damage, I don't remember if any of them do magic damage, but, um, they mostly do physical damage, so people always take armor, and then health on Zach is very good because of your passive, uh, with the blobs, and your healing and sustain inside the jungle, so, usually just pretty good to have extra health. Um, for your jungle clears, like going this, I think would give you healthier clears than than going this. This, um, if you're first, it's like a full MR team, then maybe the MR rune is rune is going is okay, but like otherwise, I wouldn't take it. Everything else looks good. It looks like you your ability is good. Um, making sure you get E. Um, I think the only other questionable thing I thought was it looks like you go like if I collapse these right. It looks like you get Dead Man's Plate a lot, which um, I don't necessarily think. I don't. I don't. I don't think I've seen Dead Man's Plate Zach. Uh, I haven't really seen anyone build Dead Man's Plate Zach, and he doesn't really seem like a champion that would really use Dead Man's Plate. Versus, I think like usually Zach's go Cinder Warmogs. As like your core two, and then like you can either go like stone play. Um, you could go like spare visage. You could go. I mean, I think even like knight's vow or redemption here is fine. Um, redemption sounds a little weird on Zach, but um, I don't think it'd be the craziest thing. Uh, Deadman's plates more for champions that have like limited mobility and limited engage tools, but. Like, it's a, it's a stat-efficient item. Like, gives you 450 health at 60 armor. So it's pretty stat-efficient. I'm not sure how much the how much damage is actually being added from your momentum. Um, so maybe this is, like, an underrated Zac item. But I just would rather go different items, like, 1, 2, 3. And then if, like, you really need armor, then maybe at, like, 4, 5, um, you can get Dead Man's. But I think... Kind of rushing it early is kind of weird. Um, it doesn't look like you do it in every game. I think going in some of these games, you go in Thorn Mail. That's probably too soon to finish Thorn Mail. So, like, if I look at this game, um, it looks like you went Thorn Mail second, which uh, Thorn Mail's been nerfed a ton in its like span. So, it, it, and if you think, if you think about how like resistances work, there's health thresholds where you need X amount of health for like Y resistance to be good. So you almost always want to be getting health before you get resistance. Um, 
or you want to be like there's a there's a couple of good charts uh, out there um, that basically show like health effectiveness uh, for each stat, but like basically getting Thornmail getting Thornmail this early finishing it doesn't give you as much tankiness as you would think. So usually like people get Thornmail for the Bramble Vest, and if it's something like where you need Bramble Vest early for whatever reason. Like going Cinderhawk Bramble, then sitting on the Bramble and finishing Thornmail later um, is a much better use of your resources. Even if you're getting this item, um, which is, what is that, the Steel or Warden's Mail. You can even get Warden's Mail and, and turn this into something else and then finish Thornmail later. Um, like the difference between these isn't that great because what is that, 3 plus 10% of bonus armor and... Three or ten, but twenty-five. But yeah, the grievous wounds is why people mainly buy it, unless like they have a ton of auto attackers. Like in this game, Vayne's like the only auto. Vayne, maybe Darius. Um, but like Vayne's the only one that's really going to be healing off for auto attacks. So probably don't even need to go Thormel. This game can probably just get uh, Warden's Mail sit on this, and then. Maybe even eventually finish this for a frozen heart or something. Um, like last item. Um, but I like the Knight's Vow, like going Knight's Vow. Like I think this is a good build. Cinder Hulk, Warmog's Knight's Vow. If your ADC is ahead, if not, like Stone Blade's good. Oh, there's a garbage truck going by. Hopefully it's not loud. But let's, like, let's get into the actual game. So we're playing... Oh, like the last thing I wanted to comment on of the OPGG uh, is it, it, you're doing really well. Um, plot two, you're climbing, like had some unlucky games. Maybe could have won some of these, but like generally if OPGG is giving you ace, um, there's always things you could do better. Uh, but for the most part, like you could chalk these up to teammate variants if you wanted to. I would still like try to find things that you could have done better in them, but like not every game is winnable, so... Like the fact that these all your if if all your losses are aces, that's pretty good. Like half of your wins are VP, that's pretty good. Uh, you're climbing on Zach, that's good. Um, you can probably like if you just continue this trajectory, you'll probably hit diamond pretty easily. Um, like what do you have? Two hundred. Like if you just keep playing Zach, you'll hit diamond. Um, probably in a month or two. At the rate you play games. So we'll see if we can help if there's anything we can help out to get you there. Um, so kind of on Zach, like on on Zach specifically, but any like jungle, any jungle matchup, you kind of look at like, okay, is this a like am I am I stronger or weaker than the enemy jungler first? So like you're Zach, you're almost always weaker than like every early ju enemy jungler. He's like Kha'Zix. He's very good at like dueling. If you run into Kha'Zix, he can kill you pretty easily. You can't fight him 1v1. Um, so when you're pathing in these games, uh, I'm going to be looking to see like if you're or if you're pathing in ways that make you not vulnerable to Kha'Zix ganks or invades, I mean, or if um, you're pathing in a way to also maybe shut down any ganks he goes for um, because... On Zach, you kind of like you can gank at level three, but level four is really your sweet spot for ganking. So like an ideal ga Zach game would be like you can you can just full clear, get level four, and then and then you can freely gank from kind of unique gank spots uh, similar to Rek'Sai. Um, sometimes you don't have that luxury because like by the time you get level four, like you have a lane that's O2, and the game starts to get kind of doomed. Um, which is why like in solo queue, some people don't like playing Zach. But if you ever like get once you get past the level four, uh, like Zach's very strong, and the enemy team's not gonna have a good time. Um, in this game, luckily, like they have two immobile immobile um, carries here and here with Lux and Mord, so that's good to see as a Zach. Uh, Ezreal's very annoying as Zach. Brom's very annoying as Zach. Um, like since like, you're basically uh, just only playing Zach, so. Like, 
it's just something where like you know that there's a lot of supports that kind of stop what Zach wants to do when he's going in. It's very there's a lot of supports that make it very easy to cancel Zach going in. Like Thresh, I think's the easiest example. Brom's a pretty good example. Um, so that's just always something you have to keep in mind, like when you're playing Zach. Like, does this champion like suck jumping into? And if it does, like it kind of changes your game plan around. Because like ganking, ganking these two champions can be very hard. Even though you do have a Thresh, uh, Thresh Tristana, um, this is just something where like if these bot lanes are even skill, uh, it's much easier to be the Brom Ezreal. But if your bot lane's better and they're just always leaning hooks on Ezreal, or they're just always like, like maybe they level two all in cheese and one or something, then you can start looking to gank that lane, um, or look to even do like lane ganks with Thresh. Uh, uh, LeBlanc's like a jungler's best friend, especially versus Lux. Um, and like Renekton's also a jungler's best friend. They, these both have like they both have very easy gank setup. Um, and they're strong laners, so that means they can also like kind of protect your protect you from invades. Because if Kha'Zix looks to like do something where he invades you early on this side, usually Renekton has priority. He can answer first. Um, usually LeBlanc. Sometimes some matchups you can get shoved in early, but it's, she's usually pretty quick at being able to get over to help. Um, so like if I'm playing at this game, like my thought process is, I really want to play around these these two characters. Um, play around these two characters, make sure they get ahead, make sure the Kha'Zix doesn't put them behind, and then if my bot lane starts steamrolling, then I can look to transition to bot lane to start. Uh, making sure that they continue to steamroll. Because if Tristan is fed, this game's pretty free. Um, she's gonna outs- like if she gets fed, she's gonna outscale everyone on their team, and outrange them. So the game gets pretty easy from there. Um, so I guess we'll we'll see kind of what you look to do. Play up oh, when you click on Zach. I think I can just double click you. Yeah. Let's just zoom it forward. So it looks like you're starting red. Um, something I like to do on Zach. Uh, I don't know how much you do it. Like this is only one game, so maybe in this game you started red. Where other games you would do this, but I think starting either wolves or um, wolves or raptors on Zach is really good because if you, with your W star, it's, it, you can clear these camps very easily. And you can do it without a leash. Um, and it opens up your jungle pathing. But like before I talk about that, like you on Zach, on Zach especially, because you're susceptible to invades and you're trying to path in a way that you don't get early invaded. Um, so you don't get put behind, so you can scale very well into the mid to late game. You need to be dropping your trinket at level one. So like when you came and like the 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 thing about watching only one game is I don't know if I don't know if this is a, a like a one off thing or if this is something you do every game. It's so like maybe in this game, like you came and sat here because you wanted to like get finish your get your glass of water or something, or like you were reading a text message or something. Um, but it's very it's it's if it's something you do every game, it's a bad habit to be in because you want to be either like looking to defend your jungle or looking to get a ward down early, especially if you know how you're gonna path. So like if I'm playing this if I'm playing this game. Um, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, um, where do I want to be on the map at different points? Like, when when Kha'Zix is level 3, what's he probably going to do? Like, he might do, like, blue, red, red, blue, uh, gromp in some order. Like, he's probably going to do those three camps in some order and then uh, look to gank. Because that's where, like, all junglers, like, most, most junglers you play against probably do a three camp into gank. And it's pretty predictable. Not every jungler does this, but most do. It. So if you if you know where he starts and you're like, okay, um, most of the time, like let's say he starts here, he's gonna do these two camps, go here, and then maybe like look to invade or gank. Well, then you could drop a ward, and you'll know if he comes to invade you. Or a lot of people will a lot of people will drop their wards like like here or here, so that you can see kind of what path he's gonna do. Like, although Kha'Zix... Like Kha'Zix can do raptors, so like dropping it here is good. If this was like a J4 that's not supposed to do raptors, like then warding this doesn't give you as much because you already know he's probably not going to do raptors. Um, but 
the main point is like make sure you're getting down your ward level one to kind of protect you from invades or just to give you more information or um in other games maybe if you're not playing zek because like zek's not really gonna level two gank or level three gank or something you can even drop your ward level one and then go back to base and buy a sweeper and you'll it should be up by the time you like look to gank and you can walk in areas and sweep um, if you ever watch like the lec you'll see some junglers do this where like they'll go like red to like bot lane and sweep to check for wards and if it's warded they just go do their camps if it's not warded they look for a gank or something um, it's pretty common play. So, I think, yeah, but like in, in this game, I would have probably warded top, and then I would have started, I would have done Wolves, Wolves, Raptors, Krugs, um, Red, and then kind of depending, like, did we see him over here or not, or do we know, like, where he started? Then you can either look for this crab, depending on, like, maybe your bot lane is, since your bot lane is going to be pushing early. Maybe the wave's over here to where your bot lane, your thresh can help you get the crab if Kha'Zix comes. Um, but like this crab's probably pretty easy for you. Yeah, Zach, it's kind of hard to take crabs. Um, but like getting this crab would be nice and then you can just reset and run out to your, run out to these camps, do these at the same time. Um, assuming Kha'Zix didn't take your camp. If Kha'Zix took your camps, it's not really a big deal because your wolves are coming up. Like, it kind of sucks, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, or if you see Kha'Zix, like, let's say you have that warded, and you see Kha'Zix cross over to your blue and Gromp, well, then you can count his CS, you can see what he has, and you know, okay, I did this, 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 wolves, or uh, this, and then now you know that he crossed over, maybe all he did was, um, maybe all he did was, like, blue Gromp red into an invade on you. Well, now you know you can go steal his wolves away. And then you can come back and like reset and and you don't lose very much here. Um, like buffs buffs right now are kind of overrated in the sense of like you don't really like blue buff isn't really that good on Zach for like it's nice for the cooldown, but not very useful on Zach. Even red buff is kind of useful on Zach, but not really. Um, well all these camps respawn very quickly. So if you're just cycling your and the term is like cycling. Um, that just means like farming your camps on repeat or farming your camps every time they're up. If you're just like cycling your your four small camps, you'll get more XP even if he's stealing away your big camps. Because the disparity in XP and the usefulness isn't as great as it was in like past seasons. So we got red buff. And we'll see. Okay, you're... So it looks like you're skipping Krugs here, um, which could be fine. It's like, this is just something where it's like, I, I would need to know why you're skipping Krugs here, because it could be a timing thing. Um, and this is something to where, like, if Kha'Zix just did this, does, does this into an invade, he's going to find you over here and be able to, like, might he, he probably wouldn't this game because your solo laners couldn't protect. Um, but we still don't have any vision, so, like, if you're low and he's able to come over and kill you before your solo laners can react, or because it's a solo queue, they're not looking at the minimap or anything and don't realize what's going on. Um, it, it's a dangerous situation because then all the only camp you have left to do is you go here. Um, so usually on, on like weaker junglers, like you'll see it on Sedge a lot. They're like the reason Sedge will usually do like four camps is because she wants to see if she gets invaded to where she can respond by running to the other side. And it's similar exactly like if you do a full clear here and then we see him cross over and you look at his CS, then you know like, okay, I can just run over here um, and we can trade. Or I know that we can collapse here because my laners are shoved up. And then if we kill him here and you just get all your camps anyway, well, now you have a kill and a full clear and you're going to be stronger than him the rest of the game. Um, like it's basically game over for him if your laners know that he's invading um, and they can react fast enough. So here we're clearing the camps. And could be like cutting these a little bit. Okay, that was a little nice. Uh, I don't really like that cue as much because doing these two camps at the same time um, is a lot nicer. Okay, yeah, I like that. Yeah, where you're doing both at the same time. But yeah, you see how low you are. If like Kha'Zix just showed up, he'd be able to almost one-shot you. And you don't, you didn't have E because you weren't level three. 
But that's okay. So we're level three and we're looking to get crab. Crab's up. Crab's so frustrating as Zach to do. Okay, we get crab. Uh, and this is somewhere where, like, if we just jump back, like, while you're doing crab, you can look mid and top. Like, if you look top, and you're looking, all you have to do is, as a jungler, uh, is is read the lane. And all that means is, you look at the minions. Um, this side has a lot more minions than this side, so it's pushing that way. Pretty simple. Uh, so this can't, like, this isn't really gankable. You could dive this, but he's way too healthy. If this guy was, like, if this guy's, like, half health, um... Then this is potentially a dive. Then it's somewhere where potentially you could walk up here and dive, but then you have to know Kha'Zix might be on this side of the map um, because we haven't seen him yet. Oh, this was a really good word by LeBlanc. Good LeBlanc. So you're looking at this, you're like, okay, it can't go top. Uh, so we're going to do this crab, and then you're like, okay, his raptors are up. Uh, probably can't go steal the raptors away because he might be over here. Um, although maybe your reenacting would be able to help first. So like stealing raptors, not a crazy idea. Um, if you look mid, now you see that more minions on their side. More minions. These minions are going to get here first because it's it's on this part of the map. So you know this wave is coming into LeBlanc. Um, and she's immobile. Uh, she doesn't have... Like, I don't think we... It, it, it's not something where you saw her blow flash, but if, if you did see her blow flash or if you knew that, like LeBlanc told you she doesn't have flash... Um, then you know, like, this is a very easy gank, because this next wave is going to come in, and it's going to be here, and it's very easy for you to get an angle. And we know she hasn't warded yet. So, if you go for this, this should be a very good gank to go for. And I think you do end up going for it. Oh, now you're going to invade him? Wait, he's trolling. Okay. I don't know how he took so long to clear those three camps, but okay. Actually don't know how he's so slow clearing those three camps. Um, cause like he, he should have been done with red buff here, but, um, it wasn't bad of you to check. Like, you were healthy enough to check here. Uh, I don't really think that should have worked, but... Okay, now you get his raptors. I think I think ganking mid there probably would have been a little bit better, but it looks like you still... Like, and then this is... Okay, okay, this is really good here. Like, doing this is something that a lot of junglers don't do. And, like, this is... This could be one of the, like... This, this is something that like uh, that you don't really see junglers doing to like diamond and stuff is leaving a camp to to gank um, when they see a fight break out because so many junglers will just finish this and then try to walk around and gank. It's like this is good that you're that you're doing this. Um, it was a little bit late. Like you probably could have saw that like where the wave was. like because when we were at Krugs, like I looked over and saw the waves coming in. So um, that's why I said like you could have already been looking to gank mid. Um, you did have like the, you did have time to do raptors or invade, but you only had time to do one of. It's like you either had time to invade before you could gank mid, or you had time to steal this over before you could gank mid. But you didn't really you didn't have time to do both. Um, it's like once you did one, you should have been able to realize like okay, now I have to go gank mid here um, because of where the wave is. Because like if you waited as long as you did, now the wave is about to crash. So LeBlanc had to had to kind of go because she needs to recall. Um, and if she doesn't go, then Lux is just going to get the crash and reset, and the win and the window's closed. So, like, this LeBlanc kind of understood that she needed to go there. Um, and you show up and get the... Oh, that was really sad. That Lux got first blood. Um, and this is something where you actually don't need to take this. Um, because this is actually going to be locked in front of LeBlanc's tower, like we see. Um, this wave just got here. It's actually going to hit. It'll crash in the tower, but... She might make it back in time. Oh, yeah. And you're super low. Oh, never mind. Lux has TP. I'm trolling. Um, but yeah, you can't really shove this uh, being that low. But it's just something where you can start leaving. Um, 
And how much gold do you have right now? Oops. Oh, I didn't know that I did that. Okay, 1100. Yeah, so it wasn't something where you need the extra, where you, uh, yeah, where you needed the gold. Um, so like you were never going to be able to crash that. And if you can't crash that, you can't shove the wave. So it's just something where like after you gank, you have to look and just think about, can I crash this or can I not crash it? And if you can't crash it, it's usually better to just leave it alone and not touch it. Um, because here you could have just did that reset and all your camp, like all your camps are up right now. So it's not like there's not like a source of income for you right now um, because you have all your camps. And the other thing is like this Kha'Zix shouldn't be able to surprise you like this. Like we knew that Kha'Zix, we knew we killed Kha'Zix here and we knew he didn't come back here because he didn't come back to any of these wards or he'd come back to this Raptors camp. And we knew this crab was up. So his most likely path was he just ran to this crab, especially because he saw you fighting mid. He was probably on this crab while you're fighting mid, um, taking it. So it's something where like you could have just ganked mid, like LeBlanc probably didn't need to die there. Um, and after the gank mid, you come over here, you drop your ward to reset. Because now we know if he invades, we can come match him, maybe your bot lane can help. And then you can run out, you can come out, and you can just do like uh, Krugs or look bot gank, and then just do a full clear, either like looking mid and then looking top. Because we know that Renekton's going to get the crash, he's going to reset, and then he's going to come back to lane, and he'll be level 6 by the time we're pathing top. Because um, he's almost level 6 now. And that'd be a really good timing to... Where something where, like, be, like Mord's pretty far behind, so Mord might not even be level 6 by the time we get there. Which would be really nice if we can gank Mord before he's level 6, so he can't alt us. Um, but here you see, like, Kha'Zix trying to help crash, but, like... He can't actually, like, they end up getting the crush because it's versus the LeBlanc, but, like, it's, he took so much XP from the Lux in doing that. So here, you're running out. So you do end up going to your Krugs. That's good. You should be looking bot right now, and you see that they haven't reset yet. Um, and the enemy bot lane just reset. Ka or they either just reset or they're on Dragon right now. Um... So it looks like someone on your team ping that you knew the dragon might be going down right now. But I don't really think you want to contest right now since your bot hasn't reset. Um, but you walk over. Probably should just drop a ward uh, here. This is good though. Like walking here is really good because we know our bot lane wants to get this crash and reset. So like protecting them on this crash where it, when it's basically like the only time cock a gank. And he really can't gank here because... Ezreal reset, so let's say, and Ezreal doesn't have TP. Um, so like right now, we should just go do our Raptors. That's good. Mid just crashed, so we know mid's going to be coming back into us. So this is something where like, we know mid's coming back into us, so we know that if we do Raptors and we walk over here, we do this, that the mid lane is going to be like here um, when we get back. Or it'll be in the middle after after Wolves. Never mind, LeBlanc's looking for a dive bot or something. I don't know what she's doing. She can't go bot. Okay, never mind, LeBlanc is shoving mid. I don't know why LeBlanc did that. Uh, more did hit six, but that's okay. So... This was good though, um, that you did this into top gank like I kind of wanted to see. So like that was really good. Um, I don't know if you did that because for the same reasons though. So it's just something where you need to like understand that that because the wave crashed for Nectin Recent came back and it'd be in a good spot to gank. That's why you did the route you did versus like you kind of... Like, there's a difference between, like, if you did this route knowing what I, like, kind of what I said you should have been looking at, then it's a really good route. Um, if you did this because, like, you were just doing your camps or something and you weren't really thinking about it, um, then that's a problem because then you can't repeat that in future games with different variables. Um, but I like to think you made the smart play here, so that's good. Okay. 
Crab should be here, so that's good. This first dragon doesn't really matter too much. Like you guys just want to scale. Um, you could have probably looked to see if his raptors are up here. Or look to get a little bit of a deeper ward. Because then if you put a ward there, uh, this is a really nice Zack gank spot. As you saw like earlier. Um, but LeBlanc didn't really set this up very good. And like we also need to wait for this wave to come in before he went. Because of how LeBlanc works. Like... She doesn't want. She can't go in if there's minions blocking her her route. Um, so like this gank, not very good. And this shouldn't be something like you should be just doing. You should have just did this into Raptors look mid and then come back do these two camps reset. Um, or potentially gank top again because you know that Mord's, you know that Mord's uh, alt is down. But like this path you just did super inefficient. Like basically as jungler, you never really want to walk. You don't really want to walk by camps. You always want to be doing your camps if you have nothing to do. This is how junglers get like six, six, seven, eight CS a minute. Because they don't just they they don't just walk by camps like this. Um and there's nowhere to be right now. Like this dragon doesn't matter. Um your bot lane scaling. There's no threat. Like, Kha'Zix is behind, so, like, he doesn't... There's, like, no threat for Kha'Zix to gank right now. And you have plenty of ward coverage to where your lanes would see. Um, so, like, this is something where, like, if, if like, we jump back, right? This is something where, like, right now you'd be you'd be able to help out top right here. Because you would have just did these two camps. Um, and there's a pink ward, so we know this isn't warded. So you could have just walked up and, and joined this fight. Um, and he hasn't raced, like, he's, oh, he did just reset. I don't know how he loses that. He probably sh I guess he doesn't have Ignite. Or I guess he doesn't have Alt either. But, like, this is something to where, it's, like, yes, like, he misplayed this, but I think he could fight the Mord. Um, but you could have been here to prevent this. And like all that is is just recognizing that, like okay, the wave is like Mord is coming off of his death. He doesn't have death realm, and the wave's gonna be in a good spot. And you have camps nearby, so that's kind of like the trifecta. Like you're basically always looking for like, like easy ganks, uh, easy ganks near, like near camps you want to do, camps that are up. And you never want to do this where you walk across the map to a camp. Like that's this is this is really bad for the, most of the time. Um, like because you pass up these camps, and also it's almost faster just to reset and then run this way to the camp. Um, but I get like we're maybe we're protecting first dragon. Like first dragon doesn't matter really. Uh, if it's free, you can take it. But you have to kind of think of like dragon and rift herald. Uh, dragon and rift herald as a jungler cost you time. So it takes you like time or like what other people call tempo. Uh, tempo, excuse my handwriting, it's really bad. Uh, this is supposed to say dragon. I don't know what that even, <laughs> uh, but they cost you time and tempo. So like, like it doesn't, if he wants to go for this, that's fine. Because, but in the time he goes for this, maybe you can do three camps and a gank. Uh, the general principle is it costs two camps to do a, a neutral objective early on. So like first dragon costs you two camps. And you're already ahead of this Kha'Zix to where like if he does this dragon and he's level five, you're gonna be level seven. You're gonna be level seven when he finishes dragon. So it's like, is Ocean Soul worth being down another level? Which most people would say like is not Ocean Soul. Like is Ocean Dragon or First Dragon worth being down two levels? Like like no, like nobody would say that. Um and if he's down two levels and you get to your Cinder Hulk. Like, he's never able to kill you. You're able to freely invade and gank all the lanes. He's just going to lose all his shit. Like, it, I, I get, like, uh, I get why people, like, try to play through these dragons heavy, but, like, it, this doesn't really matter. They're more of, like, luxuries things to get early. Um, and then the added benefit is, like, if they take this and then, like, let's say soul is infernal, right? Well, now you can stack three of these. And those, like, three of a dragon actually does something versus, like, only two or one. Um, so, 
this was pretty inefficient pathing right here. Um, and yeah, we have enough to finish Cinder Elk too, so we should have just based um, earlier. Because like right now, like as a jungler, the other thing about it being um, about jungle is you kind of need to think of it as like, okay, what are my like priorities this game? Um, and like every jungler's priority is to is to get uh, to enchant. So every jungler in the game wants to get to their enchant and also wants to like get level six. Um, this is like the goal of every jungler, like get to their enchantment and get to level six as fast as possible, basically. Um, and then like your second, like your secondary priority will be like, uh, like either like gank a priority lane or counter gank or something like these are, these need to be secondary because if you're doing this every single game, you're going to be consistently getting to the mid game, um, the mid game ahead. You're just gonna every every game you're gonna get to the mid game in a really good spot, and um, like this decides the game a lot more than the early game. I've had so I've seen and watched and played in so many games where, you know, like you want to FF at fifteen or you think the enemy team should probably FF at like fifteen because you're like okay game's over, and then like you don't like you uh, someone gets caught out, someone gets picked, someone like messes up a team fight at dragon or at at third dragon or something around like 17 minutes and or like you get baron stolen and the game is drug out longer and longer and longer um to where like the early leads don't really like they don't always stick as much where if it's mid game if it's like 15 minutes and you're like slightly ahead and then you snowball this uh to like a 25 minute like 10k gold lead or something to where you like it, the game becomes very easy um like you have a lot more you have a lot more impact in this in this time frame and this is where you actually win games. So it's it's not really like this is nice and this is really good, but this isn't this isn't consistent. This isn't how you always win games. This is like uh like it's just not it's not consistent. And like you'll get to die like you can get to diamond just spam gank like uh the the one season I got to diamond just playing pan like old pantheon. I played old pantheon and I just level two ganked every game. And got the diamond pretty fast, um, but then after that you kind of get you'll get stuck because people stop dying to the level two gank. They start warding early. Um, they start. Oh, this was a good gank. That was a good gank. Yeah, that was a good gank. The same gank could have been done um, timing wise. Like if you would have done, you could have done this gank as well as. Like farm these camp and gank top and had a reset basically, but this was a good gank because now you can shove this and if you want to do dragon or I guess they took dragon, um, now you can just shove this and everyone resets. So that's good. So here you should be running to your like I would run to my raptors here. Um, it looks like you're going for your blue and and grump, but you have to think of it as where do you want to be in. Like, if you think of each camp as 30 seconds or 20 seconds of your time, basically, you have to think of, like, okay, where do I want to be in, in like, a minute? Or where do I want to be in a minute 30? And if you look at the map, like, Renekton's resetting. He's going to walk back. He got the crash. Wave's coming back into him. So in about a minute to a minute 30, the wave's going to be in a really good spot and Rift Herald's up. Uh, there's nothing on the bottom half of the map to get. So if I go, if I go, to, if I go to Raptors... If I go to Raptors, and that's 20 seconds, 40 seconds, a minute. And now, like we talked about this top wave, now this is in position to gank. And we just did four camps. So we're in perfect, and we're by Rift Herald. So like, this is kind of like why I would, like all the things I'm thinking about, like as I'm pathing this way. Because now you can either gank top if it's in a good spot. Maybe Renekton is, uh, maybe it's not in a good spot to gank, but you can do Rift Herald. Or maybe it's not in a good spot to gank or do Rift Herald, but you can invade. Or like look mid. Or now you can like loop around, like look through mid, or maybe you just reset and run to the Krugs and then look bot lane or something. Um, it gives you more options. Cause now if you just if you just run up to like if you just run up to your blue and grump, there's nothing to do except farm after you do this. Uh, 
Alright, mid game ganked. <clears throat> So he got his flash. Do do. Oh, that's really bad. I don't know how Balin died. Yeah, like this is a lot of like wasted time right here. Cause like in my mind, I see all these jungle camp, like I see all these camps up. I'm like, okay, um, like each of these is like a hundred some gold. It's like a hundred to like whatever gold, and a kill is three hundred, and the assist is one fifty. So it's like, if you and LeBlanc kill Kha'Zix there versus you doing two camps, um, and they reduced, they were like they reduced. Uh, what is the what is the term? Not solo XP, shared XP for kills. Um, they reduce shared XP for kills. So like looking for random picks like this that don't gain you anything. Like this isn't like you get this pick on Kha'Zix and you can do Rift Herald, because um, Mord's still up, Lux is still up, Renekton's not here, so it'd still be a two v two. So you don't get anything out of killing him. You can't pressure a tower after killing him or anything. So it's kind of like a just wasted time. Um, and that's not saying like you never go for the kill there. Like um, maybe if your LeBlanc was already going for a pick there, and and she need like your a little bit of your help, then you could do it. But okay, this Mord is greedy. Oh no, okay, Mord's so greedy. That's a good see. That's a good punish on Mord because like he was clearly making a mistake. You didn't force anything there. He was just making a really big mistake, and you killed him. It's so, like there's a difference between like punishing that mistake. Um, and getting Herod off of it versus, versus like forcing a play. So here you should just you could have no he just TP'd yeah. It's like here we're still not doing like look at all these jungle camps that are up. Um, like what level is Kha'Zix? I think it, it hit it hit his level. Let's wait till he's back up. Okay, this more it is gonna kill you. I guess you have passive. Oh, no more, just gonna double kill. Never mind, he messed that up. Um, but yeah, now, like, if we look at Kha'Zix, like, Kha'Zix is now even in level with you, and the whole reason he's even in level with you is because you stopped farming. If you didn't stop farming, you'd be level 10 right now. You'd be level 10 right now, he'd be level 8. And then you're gonna hit level 11 first. Like, you, you, you can always be up in levels versus him if you would have kept farming. But instead we stopped and now he's and now we're like we're kind of weaker and like we're two levels down on this mord and he's just gonna kill us. Yeah. And we haven't farmed in four minutes or five minutes or something. Okay, let's get the blank room. Although now bot's gonna die because of her. It's like, that's kind of a good LeBlanc room, but at the same time, like, she frees up Lux to run bot, and now they're gonna get Dragon off of that. Second Dragon's not that big of a deal, though. It's like, you can look for the steal here, but I would just, like, you don't really need a 50 fit. Like, you don't really need to chance it. If you were level 10 to his level 8, then actually, like, the steal is kind of easy. Because you can just jump in and get, oh, you get it anyway. So, yeah. And you get out. That's beautiful. Okay, should just use Rift Herald mid here. Um, so something about Rift Herald, like because you're a jungler, you're gonna have Rift Herald a lot. And what you want to be using Rift Herald for is to, um, there's kind of two uses for it. Like if it's pre 14 minutes, you just want to use it to funnel gold on, funnel gold onto a carry. Um, like so, like I like the idea of you're looking to drop a top so Renekton could get the gold, and then ideally you'd let him get all of it. Um, but after 14 minutes, you want to open up the map. You want to open the map, and what that means is like, usually you want to look at what tower needs to go down to free up your like to free up your team comp to play how you want to play. So if you're looking at this, you're like, okay, 
we don't really want LeBlanc to just sit mid. It doesn't make sense for that. So if we can get this mid tower, and as, as well as like LeBlanc has a hard time getting tower damage. Um, especially versus someone like a Lux who has a lot of wave clear. So it, this tower is not really going to get damage very much. So if we're able to use Rift Herald to get damage on this tower, it would benefit us a lot. Because if we're able to get this tower down, then LeBlanc can just uh, freely go side lane. Renekton could side lane. Tristan Thresh can sit mid, and we can look to we can look to collapse on people as Zach. And that kind of plays into like what our team comp wants to do and what would be good against their team comp. Um, but with mid tower still up, it makes it kind of hard. Especially because they outrange us right now. Like Tristana's not a high enough level to where she outranges anybody. So the Ezreal Lux will outrange us and make it just very difficult for us to take tower. Um, the, the, other, the bonus thing is though that because we scale better, it's not super imperative that we get the mid tower. Where like if they were a better scaling team, then it'd be a lot worse for us because we would need to get... And like we only scale better at Tristana. Like Tristana and Zach basically. Um... Because Renekton and LeBlanc, unless they get Giga Fed, like Lux will all scale them and Israel scales them. But the Tristana should be like the hard carry in the mid to late fights. Um, but like if, the, if it was reversed where like they had better scaling like across the board and we can never get mid tower, well then they. It makes it so easy for them to turtle and scale that the mid tower becomes like the almost like a raid boss level. Oh, you're gonna die here. Oh, wait, no, okay. I don't, I don't know how they didn't finish you there, but that was a good collapse by your team. Um, but like here, you should just use Rift Herald mid. Like, Rift, Rift Herald has to go mid here. Okay, your bot's resetting. LeBlanc should just reset and go bot. We found a little Kha'Zix. Can't hunt. We, we can't go for that. So now we're going to do the NA RAM in Europe. Glad to see it has made it across regions. Um, you can't solo stop the Mord. I guess you can wave clear. But he can kill you pretty easily. Maybe not. What's his items? Uh, maybe once he has Rylize. Maybe he needs Rylize to kill you. So, your itemization is good this game. Uh, yeah, very good itemization this game. And then you can even go Knights of Third if you wanted to, although it looks like not sure. Thread, maybe Thresh is going to pick one up. This is a very greedy board to look to click clear. Uh, because we know that they're all there, and because we know, like, Dragon's coming up soon. This is just something where it's like, that that we don't really need to clear this ward yet. Um, yeah, I'll explain a little bit better. So, how we would actually clear this ward is we would need the waves to be shoved up. Because Vision, how Vision, like, how teams play around Vision in the game is... You need to uh, move up the minions because minions give you vision and because the enemy team has to respond to the minions. So, like, right now, if we're looking at the map, like, this whole area is dark. But if we move up the minions, then it's only this half of the area is dark. And then if we see them move over here, then it doesn't matter that this is dark because we know they can't be there because they're here. So we know we could walk in and clear this vision for free. Um, so that's how you have to kind of play it. Like, if you look at our lanes right now, like, our lanes aren't pushed off enough to where we can go c contest vision here. And then even if we do contest vision here and, like, there's a team fight, we can't do anything after because our waves are in really bad spots. So it's just something where you want to get in the habit of when you're clearing vision, you want to make sure that if they try to stop you or if there's a fight here, are your waves in good spots or... Do you know they're here, basically? Because you should never be surprised. Like, something I always say is, like, you should really never be surprised in League. Um, because the game exists in a way to where, uh, 
there's always like you can you can quantify the game in like in terms of like percent chance of happening. So like if you show it like right now they could be here like maybe it's like fifty fifty right like fifty percent chance they're fifty percent chance they're just like somewhere else. Um, and you can play around those odds. So you like you can walk in here and like it's coin flip like these are called coin flip plays, and and contest the vision and maybe they're here maybe they're not but you know they might be. Um, but if you're just walking here but you have no idea they're here then that's bad. Because, like, you should be able to make assumptions that, like, they could be here. They just placed the word. Like, they, they have to be here. But you don't know how many people are there, but, like, they have to be there. So they place this word. And this word doesn't really matter because dragon's coming up soon. Uh, third dragon's really important. Um, it's probably, the, like, so third dragon's funny because, like, like it's, so this is cloud. Cloud's kind of a not very good soul. Like, as far as a soul, this one's not very good. Um, in my opinion, at least. But teams love to fight for dragons and, and souls and stuff. So third dragon's the most important because it puts you on... It puts you the closest to getting the soul. Um, and it makes the enemy team most of the time, like... Even if they don't need to fight you at soul, they're going to fight you for the soul dragon. Uh, that's just, like, how people prioritize in the game. Like, people think that they have to fight you for soul or you win if you get it, which isn't always the case, but... So you could you can kind of if you get this soul and you know you're gonna be stronger, or you get this third dragon and you know you're gonna be stronger at the next dragon, at fourth dragon, um, and fifth dragon or whatever, it's really good because you can force team fights and stuff. Um so the point is like you don't need to be getting vision in this area if we're gonna try to get this dragon. We should just be moving all of our vision down here, which is fine as like if they wanna have a pink ward here, this is fine. Like this doesn't do anything for them. Um, and Harold's going to despawn in a minute, like, almost in a second anyway. How long have I been going for? 51 minutes. Yeah, this has been a pretty long one. Um, probably won't finish out this game, but we'll go a little bit longer. I don't like to go over 50 minutes or over an hour. But, yeah, it's like, that fight's really random over Vision. And we ended up trading, like, poorly. And again, like, every time every time I look at the mini-map, all your camps are up, which tells me you're not farming. And it's just so important, especially as Zach. It's so important. Like, you're, you become an unkillable god. Like, I don't like this void spot very much, but... Like, unless you saw them ward there, that's not a great ward spot. Because you have to also think about the, like, um, something you want to do is always place your wards with intent and around, like, their maximum vision. So, like, putting a ward here, like, you don't, like, it doesn't do anything if it covers, like, this area. But if you just, if you wanted to, to where it covers, like, this, you can just drop it, like, here. Or even, like, uh, like if, if you want to, like, hide it up here, that's slightly better because you get more vision out of it. But, like, these are very lazy wards. So here we end up, oh that was nice, that was a good pick. Um, are they on dragon right now? Yeah, that's what I figured. So, we probably could have contested that dragon because if you looked at where their waves were, like the waves were here and here, and we knew that two of them weren't here. Um, but maybe could have looked to contest, but LeBlanc did run top and Renekton and hunt every set, and your bot lane wasn't there yet. Um, but you could have looked to steal again, I don't think that would have been terrible. So we clear jungle, crab's about to come up. Your team's fighting randomly in the enemy jungle. Oh no, Tristana, that was really bad. That yeah, was really bad. That's just because your your team's randomly fighting. I don't know what they were doing. I don't know why Thrush is defending this tower by himself. Are they actually going to run to Baron? They cannot do Baron. No, <laughs> there's no way. Alright, LeBlanc, they're not on it. Don't worry, you don't have to do this. <laughs> they can't do Baron. That was a good pick, though. If she gets out, too. Yeah, that was a really nice pick. Yeah, this is somewhere you guys can actually do Baron here. 
Um, maybe not actually. Tristana, no, she needs two items. Uh, actually, I don't know. Like, we maybe actually would have made, might have been able to, to force this. Because they hadn't reset yet, so you're like... But the problem is they can poke you. Eh, it's probably not a good idea. Let's see, is there a team fight or something to end the game? Looks like there's a team fight to end the game. We're just going to skip to this last team fight. Uh, so I can see how you approach team fights. So like right now, there's no reason to get Thornmail. There's no reason to get Thornmail in this game. Um, you can go Knight's Vow or Stone Play right now. Uh, Tristan is like the main carry, and Thresh doesn't have a Knight's Vow, so going Knight's Vow here wouldn't be terrible for the armor. Uh, stone Plate also would be pretty good because you're going to be going in. You can pop Stone Plate, live for a long time. But Thornmail is pretty bad in this situation. They have no, like they have some healing on the Mordekaiser, but they have no like auto attackers really. Uh, that was really bad getting picked out like that. See, I told you, these games are decided by like, who gets picked out. <laughs> it's so unfortunate. Yeah, okay, never mind. Like, two people get picked, doesn't really matter. Um, okay. Uh, I tried to put a lot into this, um, so let me know if you have any questions or if anything was, like, unclear. Um... But yeah, I think this is a good spot to end. So I'll talk to you later.